my channel. You probably know that already because you're probably a subscriber, right? No, you're not a subscriber? Okay, just give me a second. Just, it's okay, it was just a little bit of a shock, that's all. Just give me a second. I understand that there are people out there who don't subscribe. I understand that. What I don't understand is why. Okay, I think I can go on. Moving on. Up until now, we've basically been sort of like a show and tell channel. I've shown you my toilet, I've shown you my heater, I've shown you how I sell vintage. But today, we're gonna change it up. Today, we're gonna be a DIY channel. We are going to install a sink right here in the bus. Running water and everything. I have not done this before. Nope. Have you? We're gonna do it together. Let's go. So here's the plan. We're using a foot pump, not electric, just a foot pump. The foot pump is gonna pick up water from the fresh water jug and deliver it to this faucet. The water's gonna come out of the faucet into the sink and drain down the drain into our gray water bottle. When the gray water's full, I'll take it out, empty it out, bring it back. When the fresh water's empty, I'll just take the hose from that one and put it on the other fresh water. The basin itself is already installed. I had a guy that I had hired to do some work and I had him put the basin in because back then I couldn't have done it. Honestly, I don't think I could have identified a jigsaw in a lineup. Cutting an oval out of the top of an antique piece of furniture, that was just way beyond my comfort level. That just shows you how fluid comfort levels are because today I could do it pretty easily. I've got a fair amount of experience cutting curved things and I even own my own jigsaw. I just know that this stuff does not come easy to me. Maybe you're Mr. Handy Pants or Miss Handy Pants or whatever and you don't need to learn all this stuff, but I'm not. I have a lot to learn and I think a lot of the people watching me do too. So why don't you just sit back, take off your Handy Pants and you might learn something too. Wait, don't take off your pants. So let's start by putting in the faucet. I chose this faucet, first of all, because I liked how it looked, but also because it's really simple. It has one handle, which is all I need because I'm only gonna run cold water through this faucet. I have a different solution for hot water, which we're gonna do on a different video. Um, I also really love the gooseneck. You can swoop it around all over the place. You can bring it over here if you wanna like fill a bucket. I can even stick it out the window. And I'm trying to figure out a way that I can maybe empty my gray water by doing that. I don't know. I haven't got that figured out yet. You don't have to use this faucet, but if you do, when you turn it over, you're going to see a big brass nut on the end. Just unscrew that. And behind that is a plastic, like a washer. Uh, take that off too. And then there's a metal piece with a gasket under it. That stays on the faucet while you put the faucet into the hole. Now we go underneath the sink where the faucet is sticking through and we put that washer on and then we put the brass piece on and it says in the instructions to hand tighten but I don't think I really want to rely on that because this bus is probably going to be traveling over some rough terrain and things kind of shake loose so I want to make sure to wrench it on there good and tight. I am going to put a little bit of Teflon tape around it before I screw it on just to make sure there's a tight seal. I don't really know what Teflon tape is. The guy at Home Depot told me to use it so I'm using it. Sounds like a good idea. So look at that, the faucet's installed. Woohoo! See how easy that was? It's not hooked up to anything yet, but hey, it's there. Let's tackle the drain next. I ordered this on Amazon and you know, it's kind of a crapshoot. You don't really necessarily know what you're gonna get, but this is really good quality, really heavy duty. And I love this little basket here. Yeah. I'm weird, I know. Now all we have to do is run this drain down the hole in that sink and we're all set. We can do this. So this part goes in the top. Uh-oh. We have a problem. This does not fit in that drain. I didn't know there were different size drains. I mean, I knew there were different size drains, but I thought like there's a kitchen size drain and there's a bathroom size drain. I didn't know there's a whole bunch of different sizes within the bathroom and kitchen genre. I just didn't, I didn't know. Okay. So I didn't know. I know now we've learned something. You probably already knew. I feel so silly. 
So it's a little bit back to the drawing board. I have to go back on Amazon. I have to order a new drain. Our sink project is on hold till we get the new drain. Excited to report that the new drain is very much like the old drain. It has the same fun little basket. Don't worry, I'm only gonna do that once. So here's the best part of the new drain. It fits. So the new drain fits. Yay! But there is a curveball. The actual body of the drain, the pipe that comes down, is too long. It goes right into the gray water bottle, and we can't really have that because if the pipe is actually going into the bottle, then every time we wanna remove the gray water bottle, we're gonna to have to disassemble the sink, and yeah, that's just not gonna cut it. So, hey, it's not gonna cut it, but what I have to do is cut it. What would be the obvious tool to use? A pipe cutter. I have a pipe cutter, but it's really small because it's only made to cut the copper pipe that I use to hang my curtains on. Let's see, what else can I use to cut that pipe? Hacksaw. The hacksaw is your friend. A hacksaw is an incredibly important tool to have. You can do so many things with it. I use mine all the time, and then I even have a baby hacksaw. This one came from the 99 cent store and I can't even tell you how useful it has been. Hacksaw. I love my hacksaw. And I'm going to hack this pipe. Hacking complete. It's pretty jagged though, so I'm going to have to sand it. Okay, so I just like smoothed it out. So now we're ready to install it. One of the things I really like about this drain is that it doesn't require a plumber's putty to install it. This silica ring takes the place of that. And now we've got our newly shortened drain and this hole here that's for the overflow see how on my sink here I've got these holes over here that's because this sink has an overflow that's a section underneath that you're not seeing that when water gets too high it's gonna flow into that hole and this drain is designed to catch that water now that's something to really think about when you're buying a drain because if you don't have an overflow you really don't want to buy a drain that has an overflow and if you do have an overflow, you have to buy one that's got an overflow. Our drain has an overflow, so that's what we've got here. Now, we're gonna put this onto the drain. And see it's with the smaller side facing down, so it's snug against the metal here. And we're just gonna slide that right in. Now the drain also says to hand tighten, but again, I'm gonna wrench it on because I'm just concerned about the motion of the bus causing things to sort of shake loose. And the last thing I want is water everywhere. And here comes the basket. Whee! Okay, now onto the pump. The arrow on the side here indicates that the line that's bringing water into the pump gets attached here. The other side has the line that goes out to the faucet. So we're going to attach both lines and clamp them down with hose clamps. Now that both lines are attached, we're going to take the foot pump and we're going to run it under the bottom rail of the vanity. Now we need to drill two holes, one for each line, coming up from underneath into the vanity. The holes need to be large enough for the lines to come through, so we're going to use a tool called a hole saw. Now, if you're not familiar with hole saws, they're basically really cool drill attachments that have a bit on them that's gonna make a substantial hole. I've got a set called the Hole Loser from Milwaukee. It's totally cool. Sometimes I just think of things to put holes in because I really like to use this thing. Is that bad? We're gonna use a 7 8 inch hole saw to make the holes. So we have to mark where we want our holes to be and then we can hole those. <laughs> Now the lines can come up through the holes and into the vanity, and we can route them to where they need to go. So here it gets a little tricky. They make these pumps in right hand and left hand models, which I didn't know. I just bought it, you know? So as it turns out, just by coincidence, the line that is on the right needs to go into the water jug that's on the left. The hose that's on the left needs to go to the faucet, which is on the right. Now. Yeah, it can be done. We're just gonna have to cross the lines inside the vanity. 
It just would have been way easier if it had been a straight shot. To attach the line to the faucet, we're going to need this adapter because they're not the same size. This will screw on to the end of the faucet and then the line attaches here and then we're going to use a hose clamp to make sure it stays on there. I'm really going to wrench the adapter on because it doesn't go very far up the thread on the faucet and I think the faucet might be metric. That might be why the, the threads are not quite matching but with Teflon tape on there and if I wrench it on good it should stay fine. On the water jug, I've just used a little bit of tape to make the hole that comes in the lid a little bit smaller so that it's just a little bit more snug. And I've also put a ring on the inside so that it's not gonna pop out on its own. All the lids to these jugs have a hole in them because there's a hidden spigot on the underside. If you unscrew the spigot, there's a hole right through. When it's time to change the water bottle, I'll just move the whole thing, the line and the lid to the other bottle. So I've left the spigot on the other two bottles. The drain hose is going through a hole on the lid too, but the hole that's already there wasn't big enough, so I used my hole dozer to cut a bigger one, and the drain okay. hose goes right in there. Okay, everything's in place, fingers crossed. So now when I step on the pedal, I should feel it kind of fill with water. Yep, I can feel that. And then if you look at the lines, the water lines are filling with water. Okay, the lines are full. So now when I step on the pump again, I should get water in the drain. But first I've got to flip the handle to open the faucet. Okay, so now the faucet is open. I'm going to step on the pedal and... Wow, there's water! There's water coming out. So you can see that the sink is filling with water and if I lift the basket, that's going to drain. It's going to go down the drain pipe and into the gray water jug. Eventually I'll get a shut off so that there's not water in the lines while I'm driving, but I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. So we're just gonna leave things as is because this is very cool. Okay, here's a little update. I did find a leak. It's right where that adapter is. Remember I told you the adapter didn't really fit on quite right? Yeah, I guess it really doesn't fit on quite right because it's leaking right there. So I'm gonna have to figure out another way to attach the tubing to the faucet. There's gotta be a solution. I see a Home Depot trip in my future. Anyway, I'm still really thrilled with the whole thing. This is a minor setback, and what project doesn't have a minor setback? It's all a learning experience, right? I am so happy because I have running water in my bus. I can't tell you how much I've been putting this off because it just seems so daunting and so huge and so hard to do, and I just did the whole thing with you in like no time at all. That's the great thing for me about doing this YouTube thing is it's pushing me to do things that I otherwise would not do. I mean, this whole channel is something that I would not do, but I'm really having a ball and I really want to thank you all. I'm getting misty eyed. Okay, I promised you a tour. Next week's gonna be the tour. So if you know people who you think would like to see the inside of this bus, please tell them to subscribe. I mean, I can't make a rule that you can't watch it if you're not a subscriber. I don't have any authority like that in the greater YouTube universe, but it sure would be the polite thing to do, don't you think? Science has proven subscribing makes you smarter, liking makes you stronger, and commenting makes your hair shiny. You want those things, don't you? Subscribe, like, comment, you can have it all. You know what sharing does? Sharing just makes you feel warm and fuzzy. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna chalk that up to science.